How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf, and uh, today yeah, I'm going to go and do the gameplay and review of this new beast, the Zix 605R. Um, yeah, normally I like to have a few days to mess around with it, but to be honest, I've already kind of set the bar, and I know where all the other vehicles are when I do this review, so it just helps me to gauge it a lot better anyway. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll have a look. Engine white, it's got the KZ GT, uh, the big one, it goes up to S on the power, which is pretty good. If you put the roof rack on, it goes down to A+, but that's not that bad. Uh, I'm going for the advanced special gear, but I just don't like with the fine tune how it slows down when you're putting it in reverse and that. There is no raised suspension for it, but it sits pretty tall for what it is. Tyres as well, these are the only ones. They're 61 inch, which is pretty cool, but there is no chain version, so you will uh, slip and slide on like black ice roads, all that sort of thing. Uh, put the top winch on, the snorkels, I believe they're both pretty much the same, near as makes no difference. As for add-ons, it's got the crane, the logging crane, all the usual stuff, that short logging trailer, uh, the vibrator module thing. Sideboard, fuel, a saddle high, so it's got no saddle low. And then you've got this roof rack, which is pretty damn good, because it's 600 repair points and 200 fuel, so I definitely like that, that's uh, decent. And it should be that much, because it's a pretty big roof rack, really. Uh, you've also got this thing, you can fit on the back, but it, all it has got is like two spare tyres and 40 fuel. And I don't really think it's worth it, because if you're also towing a trailer, it'll get in your way a bit when you try and do like a three-point turn or whatever. The trailer can't bend round on your fifth axle as much, because that gets in the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, the option's there if you want it. I've, I'll get to it later, but I've got other recommendations <laughs> for that. Um, bumpers. I have to say, to be fair, the stock bumper sits like the most flush. But if you go through the others, I was just trying to line it up with those boxes in the background. Um, yeah, those all stick out more. They're roughly the same height. Maybe that one's a tad lower. That one's about the same height, but it sticks out more. So, sort of take your pick. You'll see why I'm sort of specifically mentioning that in a minute. I've gone for the top bumper. It's got a few extra little fog lights on the front and that. But yeah, overall, uh, we'll get to it later. But that can make a little difference. Uh, there's just normal things. Horns. Um, the exhaust, sorry, yeah, they stick out the side, so it doesn't really matter which one you get. They kind of spray the smoke down between the tyres anyway, which is pretty cool, because at least then it doesn't get in your view. Um, Colour-wise, it's got like the army camo is just when you've not painted it or anything. I believe that's what colour it is when you find it. Obviously, all the usual stuff. Uh, there's black, grey, white. Looks pretty cool in all of them. Um, yeah, that's I believe that's a different camo. That one definitely is. And then you keep going down, you've got a few, bit of a mad one. I mean, fair enough, at least they put a crazy one in. Not too keen on it. That one I kind of like, but I don't know. It doesn't look very, looks like it's not rendered properly, if that makes sense. So I just stuck to the normal uh, camo. So yeah, we'll go and have a look at it. Uh, for this little first bit, though, I'm just going to take the roof rack off. So yeah, just because I don't think it'll make little to any difference at all. But just for the sakes of it, like I don't really put any add-ons on other things if I can help it when I first start. Looks wise, I mean, it looks very good, yeah. It was, it was pretty much my favourite truck in Mudrunner. It's a toss up between this and the E7, whatever it was, but the E thing cost one extra star, so the D series trucks were cheaper and they were easily as good. And yeah, they were definitely. Uh, I liked them. It, view inside, like all the mirrors and that, you can see the bit of the garage door, which is good, even when you stick your head out the window. I could also see the edges of the tyres. Um, horn. It's actually not bad, pretty decent. I mean, not the best. The P, the P16, I'd say, is still better than a few others. But yeah, it's definitely well up there, like top five or so horns in the game. I think that's fair, or around there anyway. Um, revs. The rev counter is kind of just to the right, above that little red button, really. Uh, it revs up to just over two, two, one, two, two thousand. Doesn't not particularly fast at getting there, but it's the Kza GT engine, coupled with the advanced special, so they're kind of like a slow set up anyway, but very torquey, which is nice. Um, yeah, double front steering. It's got like, I don't know if it's the official term, but was, some guy said it was like rocker arm suspension, where they're kind of joined and as one wheel gets pushed up, the other one gets pushed down, etc. As for all trailers and etc, it can tow all the towable stuff. Uh, obviously you've only got a saddle high, so you've only got the option of all the saddle high trailers. I Me mean, bloody down on the D-pad been driving me mad, it's been getting a bit iffy again. Um, yeah, driving along, you can see the smoke all squirting out to the side. Turning's actually not too bad. Full lock, it's got quite a nice angle to it. So yeah, it's probably a little bit faster steering than the Dolphin as well. It's still probably slightly on the slow side, but it's pretty nice, pretty well balanced for, again, considering the size of the truck and the wheels and all the rest of it. It's, uh, yeah, no complaints. And obviously ticking along here. 
uh, yeah, fifth gear and no issues or anything. So this is like the first challenge, I suppose, this little mud section. Which stuff like the dolphin, this is literally where the dolphin got its name, the off-road dolphin. For how well it flew through here. Again though, the dolphin's got like the high range gearbox. This thing though is motoring along fifth gear like no issues. Plowing through there just fine, so uh, that was a pretty good start. As I start going up here, not that it's anything major, but it hasn't quite got enough to keep it um, in fifth. So I quickly tap L1 to make it jump to first without it doing itself and making you stop and all the rest of it. And it's just little things like that, where if I had the roof rack on now, it probably would have done that as well, obviously. And then I would have been like, hmm, is that because of the roof rack? So I only would have gone back, took the roof rack off and done the bloody same thing again. Um, yeah, ticking along just fine, though. You can sort of see when you're looking at it. It sits quite nice and wide, and it's also quite a low-down truck, really. So looks a little bit almost like a rat rod <laughs> in that sense that it's like quite squashed and wide. But that's good for tipping. Uh, flying down here, a little tree test, took a few random hits of damage there, which is surprising really, because you'll sort of see later on. Hits those three trees down, it's pretty damn good at killing trees, which is uh, definitely a plus in my book. Going along here, I know it's the advanced special gearbox, not the high range, but I stuck it in high because a lot of stuff gets to about here and then starts wheel spinning in high. That obviously lost a bit of speed there, but... It stayed in high, didn't stall, and we're all good. It, like, ploughed through there. So, yeah, as far as, like, motoring through the terrain, like I said with the tyres, they... Well, they're mud tyres, but they I reckon they're, like, unique tyres, so they might be coded a little bit better than the normal selection you get. A bit like the Tatrin's got special tyres, the P16, I believe the Cat 770G might have. Maybe one or two others, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I don't think they're necessarily as good as the Tatrin ones, say, but they're probably maybe around the P16 ones. Um, driving over rocks, you can see going as fast as I can, fifth out of five. I didn't take one single bit of damage. That's why I just said it was a bit odd that I took damage when I was flying down that hill. But the thing's actually got quite a nice speed, considering the advanced special gearbox is generally fairly slow. But because this has big tyres, like the 61-inch tyres, it yeah, again, for one rotation, I'm travelling further. So it's actually got like a nice balance of pace and all the rest of it. It's, uh, yeah, pretty nice normally before long I'm back in a high range gear box truck like the Dolphin but this thing's quick enough that I could uh, certainly live with it anti-terrorist barricade test actually took no damage hitting it but then just they, those things once I started running over it it does that no matter what just starts nailing the wheels and suspension so as far as hitting the barrier though it didn't take any which is pretty good um, yeah the black river river crossing section this first bit's always about that slow no matter what you drive through but once you get to this bit, it kind of starts picking back up. I stick it in auto, I think I'll go into high gear at some point and all sorts. But as you can see, I mean, little to no effort, it's ticking along. Absolutely fine. The current can get a little bit strong here for some of the smaller, lighter vehicles. But this thing's certainly got enough weight and planted enough and everything that that's not even standing a chance of pushing it off to the side. And then, yeah, it drives back out of there. No issues whatsoever. So it's looking like a pretty good start. I mean, you'd... You bloody well hope so. <laughs> with the kind of terrain they've given us on these last maps, we uh, could do with something that can handle handle its business pretty well. Just push through both those other anti-terrorist barricades and it went pretty well. Normally, smashing through these fences takes a lot of damage and stuff as well, but it didn't really there. Running over some of the pumpkins. Um, driving through this farmer's field as well, cause it's like sort of a ploughed field with little furrows, whatever they're called. But you can see like the so-called rocker arm suspension go in and yeah that little mud section there does actually slow a lot of trucks down but this thing ticked along no issues apologies a little glitch there got me with a few glitches tonight nothing too insane i mean smashes through them all day long i was taking three or four damage each hit and i believe i was in fifth gear then for that one like in the auto so spin it round i'm surprised the engine was taking damage because it's actually behind the cab so you'd sort of think it'd be uh, far enough away uh, now i'm in the high gear and that's just taking well, three there. I believe it starts taking like two and then one and stuff. So maybe a tiny little bit less damage if you're in the high range. But the point being there was enough torque and power and speed to still knock them over like um, consecutively. So yeah, that's pretty good. So next up, uh, what are we on? One of the snowy map, Northport. That's it. <laughs> Losing track. Um, yeah, the snow test plows through absolutely no issues. Climbing over the barriers. It's not got the chain, so it's... You see there, little struggles a little bit more to bite over, but because they are just big enough tyres, it was relatively fine. You see there, though, no chain. It's not even trying to go up the rock. It's just skidding along. 
Uh, that was actually a little glitch there, but to be fair, I probably would have just about edited that bit out anyway. Um, long story short, I put a winch on the tree and then I was able to go over the rocks. But yeah, that's a slightly taller section where that catches out some of the uh, trucks, but this thing still had enough clearance. Even though it's got a bit of a chin on it, there is enough height to the thing in general that it uh, can actually like yeah get over stuff like that, even though that approaching that barrier from that side of the road makes it even taller. You can see that I was understeering a little bit there. Again, no chains, so that's part of uh, that'll keep getting you. Plowing over here, that's kind of super snow really for most vehicles, and this thing didn't really seem to batter an eyelid either way. It just ticked along, and that was it. I'm going up these uh, this rock. Well, you'll see. I end up tipping, but I'm kind of I'm gonna say this is my fault for this one because I went too far over to the right to where the wheels had no choice but to fall off, and then that was just inevitably gonna happen. Um, yeah, ended up balancing on its side pretty well, but that's that, so I'll just recover to garage, come back and do it again. So I'm pinning that one on me, because as you see here, if I just keep over to the left enough to where I don't force the wheels to drop down on the right, then it's fine. Jumping down there, the bumper kind of punches in the ground, but it doesn't make, you don't get caught up on it or anything. There is a rock somewhere there I'm running over, but that was no issue either. So next test, kind of the jump in the wall test, <laughs> one of my favourite tests to be honest. And this was my first time trying it, genuinely had no clue. Like, I've drove this for a few hours, but like I said, it's just, yeah. If I go and do all the, by now, when I'm talking now, I've already got all the footage. I now know the characteristics of this truck, so it's just, I need to get this footage to know myself. But I used to like to know before I even started getting the footage, if that makes sense. Long story short, I couldn't get up because the bumper, I reckon, was a little tiny bit, sticks out too much and it was catching on the wall. So I recovered to the garage and put the stock one back on. But I still couldn't get up because it was just about catching. So I thought, well, maybe that's just... It can't get up. But I put a winch from the back to that tree. It was winching, kind of jiggling my tyres left and right. And then eventually it bumped up. Well, I mean, it took, what, five, ten seconds. So nothing crazy. And I was able to get over there. So scraped by by the skin of its teeth. But it did get over. I also couldn't get the back end off unless I stuck a winch on one of them trees. But I did let off the throttle halfway. So maybe if I'd just kept it pinned, I would have been all right. Going through the trees, the old uh, tree test. I mean, considering how wide this thing is, and it's fairly tall when I've got the roof rack and everything on, it got hung, hung up on a branch for a little bit there, but it actually punched its way through pretty bloody well. Like, that's decent for the size of the truck. And, uh, yeah, climbed up there, no problem. I'm, I've edited... I mean, it's a bit of a long one. There was a lot to fit in. <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, cargo test coming up. Um, yeah, it. there was some bits of footage that I've got that I've never needed to before that are kind of relevant, so... There's a few extra things. Um, yeah, the cargo test. I was actually very impressed with how well it turned here. That's perfectly decent. That's as good as, if not a t even a tiny bit better than um, all the usual stuff. Like, a lot of stuff was the same kind of ballpark area. The Vorons, the Tager, I believe. The, I don't know, the Royal. The ANK. All that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, ticking along just fine. Now, I've brought this trailer for this one. I, I'm only limited to... Um, saddle high stuff. I could have done the 8 slot, I suppose. I mean, it never really crossed my mind. I just had this trailer in mind because it's quite a fat, chunky trailer. It kind of suits the fat, chunky nature of this truck. See, now I'm understeering because the no chained suddenly hit the snow and it all the steering kicks in at once, but it's better than none, none at all. Climbing over here, it's actually doing, yeah, very well over here, especially considering this trailer is heavier. Still only got five lots of cargo like a normal, say, a normal semi trailer, but. As if I took the 8 slot over there, I don't know. I mean, the, the 8 slot's biggest issue going over that little bump I just did is that the 8 slot catches in the floor and I can't help that. And in real life, I would just rip the trailer through the terrain, but it doesn't work like that in this game. Or not as simply as that. Not as, like, 100% efficiently as that. Um, yeah, again, good turning circle. Though. It ploughed through that. I think that's fair to say it walked that little section. Got round the left-hand corner with no issues. Pretty decent, nice steering on it. I've missed my old uh, trailer park, checking, checking no thieves have been around. But again, it's motoring along here. I normally do a high range test along here, but it will million percent get into high range going down there. That's like one of them wheelie bins that I was saying that old boss I used to work for <laughs> hit with his truck at like 60 and it went flying over someone's house and garden and everything. Um, yeah, well I pulled the trailer through there, no problem. For a little water test, had... No doubts here, but it was going to motor along just fine. I believe I'm back up into fifth gear and it's ticking along. 
And when we turn here, I end up clipping the rock and kind of stopping. I would say that was more my fault. If you just skim a rock like that with your tyre, it kind of grips into the tyre and sort of locks it in place for a split second and just zaps all your power. It's too wide to go through here just flat, but I was kind of like, drive at it and we'll find out. One of the sides are going to have to kind of bump up, but they had no real issues doing that. Didn't need the winch or anything. And this snow through here, particularly that little bump down and back up, can be quite slow. Oh, apologies, a little glitch there, but it made it through that bit. This is just a little bit further down the road. I mean, this has like got its own little tracks now in the snow, so it's never been an issue there. But this little bit where there is no tracks is normally super snow that makes a lot of stuff go down to like half a mile an hour. This thing slowed down a bit, but not a lot. Interior test, that little tree in front of me, um, I could see the whole lot of the tree. So that's kind of lets me know that, yeah, it's pretty good as far as like seeing over the steering wheel and everything. There is like quite a fat A pillar. There is actually like a little window in between, but with the roll cage on the roof rack, that kind of perfectly blocks that. That's what I was just looking at there. That, yeah, the outside scaffold sort of thing. Yeah, that's blocking it. Roll cage a bit, whatever. But as you can see, I mean, ticking along, ploughing through here, whether... You, uh, to be fair, it was... Most of the time, it was best to just stay in auto because it made its way up to fifth gear quite a lot and then obviously if I can get to fifth gear that's faster than the low ranges and the high range I mean technically in like a high range gearbox eighth gear is faster than high range but the chances of you getting in eighth gear unless you like going flat out down the runway never happens so you're always stuck in about third or fourth with a high range on this sort of terrain and then high range is more advantageous for me as I've said though, it's like, some people have been telling me the fine-tuned gearbox is pretty good these days and it wouldn't surprise me, they might have broke all the other gearboxes to help sell that one so to speak, but yeah, it's just the slowness of like the gear changes and that I just don't really like when they forced us to have that on the reverse when Phase 3 come out, I just didn't like it. This rock bridge thing, I went flat out there in auto and uh, yeah, it didn't even catch its bumper. That's a nice thing, it's got just enough clearance on its bumper but or basically in this game, like for the most part, you get like say the rocks. I said it ages ago, but they come in usually four main flavors. You got like small, medium, uh, meaty, and juicy, or juicy and meaty, <laughs> whichever way around it was. And stuff like the collobs before they got their raised suspension could only handle the small and medium rocks. So anything that was juicy and meaty screwed it over, which was quite a lot of rocks. As long as you can get over them, now they are kind of adding super meaty and super juicy rocks. So yeah, like, that's now the next step. But the point being, a lot of the rocks that they've scattered over the roads and all sorts are, are like, of a certain size. So when something's tall enough to get over it, it's just, that's it. It's It'll get over pretty much everything. And, I mean, going through the snow here, it's having uh, no issues. I was kind of testing out between auto and high, low and high range and all that. I believe there is actually a little difference between high range and high, low. So in this case, high range is acting a little bit like a high, high low, like an, another fourth gear in the low ranges. Cut through there, no issue. It would have made it around that corner as well, by the way, uh, when I went under the pipe. I just, for, I, I was about to turn through the next little gap and it was like, I got it wrong. I needed the one that, yeah, I just overshot a bit. Um, this is the mud test, or the devil's mud on, uh, yeah, again, Northport. I mean, I'm down in the uh, low range. Diffs are always on on this, which again, that's like all the other vehicles we got for free, or sorry, and the DLC, the Brigadier thing. Um, they've all got, uh, what's it called, like engageable diffs, i.e. they're not always on when you're just in auto, so this is definitely more built for the kind of things we're going to need to be doing. But yeah, ticking along through here, I keep going up through like high, low, medium, low, low, low. It just the same speed regardless it's pretty much how much wheel spin do you want I ended up setting it in the middle one but yeah I mean the point is though it's crawling through here I shouldn't imagine it'd probably make much difference even if I had a trailer but again you can see with the bumper that it's sitting just over the mud and that's what I'm saying because this is obviously a game they've set certain things where they just things are repeatably that high like for example if you drop down into the ice this bumper, again, sits just above the unbroken ice, which is perfect because that's normally what gets you. Like, with the Dolphin, is just low enough that it's breaking every bit of ice in front of you with the front bumper, and that's what's catching. 
so it's just just enough height that it's uh, yeah it works really well so going through the mud I mean there's absolutely no trouble there it went pretty well so next up is the old uh, mountain climbing test and to be honest I had kind of I suppose a good feeling on this one because uh, it does sit quite wide and low so I was at least thinking like it's not really gonna it should in theory be pretty hard to get to roll and again it's uh, even though it has got a bit of a nose on it you'll see when I do like the the nose clearance test in a minute at the top of here that it's not the most amazing for that but again there's plenty that aren't like it, it is what it is it's not everything can be a goddamn horse of a vehicle that's why they made a horse of a vehicle well no one made him he made himself he's a loaf created using self-raising flour so clearly he raised himself and yeah there you go caught his nose like it's just it is what it is stick in reverse but I'm not tipping there's plenty of vehicles now that would be going to the right of the screen very promptly so yeah a bit of jiggling around maybe approach at a bit of a diagonal and uh, it's going to have the same nose issue just now but again plenty of other trucks did in the reviews it is what it is it's got good clearance to where the nose isn't really an issue if you're on say level ground and bumping over things it's when you go down a dip and it suddenly changes angle to go back up the other side like that like a little quick sharp gully that's where it'll get you so coming up to the uh, the rolling test and it's still I mean there it almost started slipping down fortunately it kind of dug in and started to roll rolled over once again the bigger trucks are kind of have the advantage there because one roll in a bigger truck gets it at the bottom but it clearly landed on its wheels very I don't know like it was clearly it wasn't at risk of keep going it just absolutely planted itself on its wheels and then sat there so I think as far as tipping it's pretty bloody good not like club long nose levels but that thing is damn near impossible to roll with, unless you're really trying It's not bad on the turning circle, I just kind of took that corner a little bit tight. If I'd gone a little bit wider on the first bit, I would have made it around those trees, I reckon, without doing a little reverse. And climbing up here, I mean, this is where not having chained can sort of bite you a little bit, but it crabs over to the left pretty well, which most trucks kind of have to do anyway, and it does actually get up here. So, yeah, I don't think they have, like, chained coded into them anyway, because... I'll show you later, I go up an icy hill and I can't get up it, so they've definitely not got that, but there's still enough grip on that. I mean, that hill doesn't really behave like ice, so to speak, So, but I do believe the chain helped bite in a little bit. I mean, there, that's pretty good for not tipping already, considering the size of the thing, but like I said, because it sits quite squashed and low down, it's uh, pretty good, but it's actually crawling along like the centre line start skiing now they're like normally they're well long gone by but yeah by then so that's not too bad does a little mad flip see it still stays weighted enough on its wheel end that it keeps it below the 90 degrees so i can fire up the engine probably a bit of luck there i get it but still it worked and we got out of there you see climbing up this hill and i remember doing this in a few other video uh, videos this is the difference between chained and muds this has got muds first of all i don't know what that was about it just suddenly cut the power and rolled back uh, so we'll give it a free pass on that one stuff with muds starts wheel spinning here chained would just drive to the top there and i yeah i definitely like would pretty confident in saying that because i remember having the exact same thing happen in other review videos where i came back with both tires and I was able to get up there with Chained. Can't remember which video. Can't even tell you 100% if I left it in the video. But I million percent remember doing it. But yeah, crab over to the left again. It was just a slightly better option. Again, when I've done it before, crab over to the left. The muds could get up that little bit as well. So yeah, all in all, they're basically muds. Uh, next up is the quarry test. And to be honest, for this quarry test, I'm bringing this trailer. But I'm going to abandon it halfway through. Because it wasn't very good. And it wasn't really fair with the test. Because I've never done this trailer before. Normally, I do the semi trailer like the blue normal one with a saddle low or the ramped flatbed and for some reason I just brought this thinking like well it's a bit of a better challenge on cutting through here and stuff 
which is nice because it's staying in fifth gear at the minute even ploughing through here which is kind of like super mud that again used to be a pain but now <laughs> now we reminisce fondly of the days we only had super snow and super mud um, yeah it goes through there no problem funnily enough it dropped down to first gear there after it got out I mean no doubt the loaf behind he's probably picking up 98% of the slack he usually is there's a nice neat looking quarry down there it's nice to see my trailers have all been filed correctly but yeah this thing's ticking along uh, down here with no issues didn't think it would to be honest little loaf flying around I think to be honest I put like as we were looking at it say the right hand side winch point on the trailer on like the left hand side of the loaf so it was sort of making it go quite far over to the right as you're looking at it yeah I'll leave my loaf there though go down here I mean there you go it plows its nose into the ground a little bit but not enough to where it really catches it and stops it dead or anything it did kind of just sort of smash through the mud a bit and carry on and as far as pulling this trailer through here there wasn't any issues this thing was handling it no problem but as you'll see I don't leave much of it in but yeah it's just this tra it's more this trailer that's causing the issues than the truck or anything so I mean the ramped flatbed has its own set of issues which we'll find out very shortly and you've seen before in videos as far as that goes I was no trouble going through there although they appear to have moved some pretty massive juicy and meaty rocks I believe that's where we got the names juicy and meaty rocks from that little section yeah now look the trailer's cut in inside on the corner so much it's beached itself and I couldn't pull it any further up and then when I'm going up here it was just I don't know it wasn't seeming to let me steer it was just making me scoot along and it wasn't very good I probably like there is a little glitch here but again it was I was practically just going to edit this out and I thought I may as well leave it in just to explain it but when I now get up here which it glitches the one tiny bit but when I got to touch in the other side like there it wouldn't let me drive any further up and it's because the trailer's like connected to the saddle I can't I'd have to leave the whole trailer in the air, which it just there isn't enough power or whatever to make that happen. So, long story short, I abandoned the trailer, I went and grabbed one of these ramped flatbeds that are scattered around, I mean, neatly filed around, and uh, yeah, we'll go for it like a bit fairer with a uh, bit more of a normal test. Got me a little horse in position, ready to go. But as you can see already, it's now the turn, the steering's just gripping in and it's all good. It's just when that, like anything that's on your fifth wheel saddle whatever it sort of locks your whole truck straight with the trailer so yeah it just it was stopping me from like planting in the ground properly and the same issues as we had before I got up there with no issues but then that ramped flatbed starts cutting into like the first peak of the hill and for context I mean the collobs did this I think the, yeah, there's quite a few things that have done it to be honest everything that couldn't have the blue semi-trailers kind of been forced to have the ramp flatbed and the loaf's like fine driven lift bro so of course sending the loaf when I jumped back in this truck the engine was off I took the handbrake off and rolled backwards down the hill before it fired the engine up so I had to kind of climb back up a little bit but not really an issue uh, yeah put the loaf up there set him in place stick a winch on him just press that button wait for him to turn the engine on I mean look at the loaf he just he's planted <laughs> going nowhere. It's pulling me up the hill. Cheers loaf. Saves the day again. So I mean as far as it being able to go up those hills it was I'd say doable. It's just yeah like when you get the uh I've got a bit of footage coming up pretty soon. I'm, it like I caught this trailer being a dick in action live. Live and uncensored so it just kind of helps illustrate the point I'm making that it's a bit of an anchor. Um, ticking along here, it's funny actually, not that it's really an issue, but with the smoke spraying out like that, I can't see what my back wheels are stuck on, if that makes sense. But again, that's it was only just because that's literally the thought that popped in my head when I was doing that little bit. But it doesn't bother me, I'd rather the smoke sprays low down than, uh, yeah, up like to basically where your third person camera view is going to be. And I honestly was a little bit surprised here, but it can't get up there. It's wheel spinning. I'm trying to jiggle it left and right. You've seen a little glitch there. I might have also edited a bit out, but I did try in like, you know, medium, low, etc, etc. It's basically, it's wheel spinning, so it doesn't really matter what gear I put it in. It's not power that's the issue, it's grip. So that's just, yeah, that's going to be the case. So again, send in the horse. Gets in his little loaf holes. Right, there we go. 
He's in. Again, uh, yeah, wait. It, every time you switch vehicle now, it turns the engine off, which... Well, I don't know. I'd kind of like it to leave it on maybe for just for a minute. Just so if you switch back and forth pretty quick, it just you don't have to keep firing it up every time. But yeah, obviously having another little go now, jiggling it around, it just it ain't getting up. It's wheel spinning, so if the wheels were all locking up and had no more power, I'd be questioning it, but grip is grip. A lack of grip is lack of grip. But you see, stick a winch on the loaf, wait for him to fire his engine up. He stays planted because he's a goddamn professional. Pulls this thing up there with no issues. Again, <laughs> for anyone fairly new to my videos, this is why I bring a goddamn horse of a vehicle with me everywhere, because just when I'm making videos, like he's forever coming in handy, saving the day. Once I was up, mostly though, the uh, this thing actually had enough power and grip to still carry on. It's just that one little bit of the hill. Stuck the winch on the loaf just because I needed him to move over to the side. I mean, look at him. Is there anything he does that just isn't extremely helpful every time? Extremely helpful and time efficient. But yeah, there's like one li that little section where I started wheel spinning on the hill. That catches, I don't know, 60, 70 percent of the trucks out, and this is uh, one of them. Flying down here, got some pretty nice speed going down there for an advanced special gearbox. You can see for a second, I kind of bend the trailer there. <laughs> it goes flying. I dug my nose in on the hill, so that didn't help. Kind of catapulted the uh, cargo all over the place. Again, sadly, there's a little glitch, but I just kind of kept driving forward, rallying over all the trailers and everything, and it boated through there pretty well considering there was a fair amount of stuff to wade through. And normally I just disconnect the trailer here, but I just wanted to quickly try this, which I didn't do in every review video, but... Some of them, and I was uh, curious as to if this one could climb up this little section. Although I have to say, I've not got cargo because it just got catapulted off, so... That could make a little bit of difference, but at the minute... I'm kind of caught where I couldn't quite get that third axle up, so... As usual, we have to call in the horse. I mean, look at him, just walks up that rock that's like at least half the height of him, if not more. And, uh, yeah. He's going off the top diving board. Look at him go. He's unprofessional. He lands it. Oh, he's gone arse over tip. It's not the first time. Won't be the last, but he's back. He's not the goddamn professional for no reason. So I got the loaf there, because it kind of, like, wedged him in that little garage bit. And I was going to stick a winch, but then I thought, just before I do... I just want to crab this thing over to the right a little bit and see if that helps. And it did. So, it made it up. That was pretty good. Again, though, it didn't have cargo, so, but that might have helped a little bit. Ramping over the trailer. The reason I left this bit in, this was just me kind of messing around. I just wanted to keep flooring forward. But it climbed over this trailer, which is, I, I'll be honest, I've not really done a whole lot of that before. But now, look, caught this trailer on camera. Look at it get hooked onto the trailer near the rear wheels of that trailer. That is where it does. That's what it does on terrain. It hooks in and that's it. There's no logical reason if that's just wheels on the back of that trailer that it would hook the trailer like that. That was going to make me drag an upside down wide boy heavy trailer, whatever the bloody hell it's called, along the floor upside down instead of just bumping your wheel over it. So. That is a uh, yeah, pretty conclusive proof that what I've been saying for a while, they, the trailer acts like an anchor, and that's exactly what it did on the peak of that first quarry hill. Hooks in with some invisible hitbox that we can't see, and just locks it in place. Uh, there, long story short, there's no chain, so I went to go around that corner, just kind of drifted, and that's just the nature of what you'll get without chains. Uh, for a little ice test, we're in Lake Covd. There's a twin stay aside over there. <laughs> that's where one of them are then. Can tick him off the list. Not seen him for a while. And yeah, it's actually very good at going through ice. And the reason, or well, part of the reason why, though, you'll uh, see a pretty good example of in a minute. Normally, cutting through this bit, there's bits that are unbreakable here as well. So I don't, I'm not as keen normally on testing it through here. But nonetheless, I left the footage in because it did actually manage to go in and out of both sides. Uh, going along with these narrower bits of ice as well. You can see though, the bumper stays high enough above the ice that I've only got to worry about my wheels smashing the ice, and that's good because the wheels are spinning, so they can start climbing over the ice. A bumper just hits it, and that's it. There is no climbing. I'm sure in a minute, I kind of spin the camera around and zoom in to the front a little bit better. Yeah. And there, you can see the bumper just sits higher than 
the depth of all this breakable ice, which again is good. That's exactly what you need. Allows the wheels to do their job, and we're back out. So as far as that goes, it's a uh, very good, uh, like an off, like some serious off-road terrain. All this super snow, super mud, even some of the death mud and death snow. This thing's done better than anything I've seen so far, and I've been taking out what I would consider some of the best vehicles in the game, like the Tatrin and the Dolphin. Uh, did I take the Tega out? No, I nearly did, but then I would have had to have chain changed to chains. I didn't really want it. Uh, driving all, over all those ice bits, though, it never took any damage there either, but I jumped in here, it's not tall enough. Most stuff isn't. The Azov Iceberg was, but yeah. Like I said, even though it's a uh, quite a big truck, it sits quite squashed and low down, so it didn't have enough height to keep its snorkels high enough. Again, I apologise, a little glitch there, it was, I was pretty pissed off about that, but regardless, I mean, it absolutely just walked through that river like it was nothing really, so there wasn't a whole lot to be missed or anything, but yeah, I just, literally tonight, I hope my other videos made it onto YouTube, I've uh, forgot to check, I've just, I'm basically doing two videos today, and one of them is a review video, which takes a bit of bit of doing so uh, yeah kind of been in a little bit of a rush and to be honest <laughs> I don't really want to load the game back up find this truck recover it load drown lands up just to catch two seconds of me driving through a river that was a piece of piss to drive through plus I'm about to drive through another one anyway all this here was like super mud rum flooded foothills and again this thing is plowing through it it's funny actually because what it makes me think is that these are like uniquely coded tires because it's funny how they struggled on the quarry hill, but then as you'll see later on, it's been going through some of like the death mud sections better than pretty much anything else. Um, so I actually think it sort of highlights the fact that they have actually coded some new extra special, even more tough mud and snow and everything, because these tyres are obviously matched to like the maps we've just got, and yet it couldn't even handle mud as simple as like going up that quarry hill. So yeah, it just that I think that kind of highlights it pretty well that they have done something different to add a bit of extra. Well, I say difficulty. It's questionable if that's the right word, but they certainly slow more of your trucks down. Yeah, here's another thing crawling through the river. I mean, again, it's I've dropped it down into high low. It doesn't really matter. I think I'll try and go into high in the end because it's a little bit quicker. But there's no issues. It climbs over rocks very well. I've got a bit of better footage in Erskill River coming up that'll kind of illustrate how well it climbs over some pretty big rocks. So this is um, the hill outside the Erskill River garage and this is where I couldn't get up in various vehicles that didn't have chains on and this thing when I actually took a big run up and kept my momentum I did actually I was able to get past this bit but I rolled back down and went from like a standing start because you're not always got the option of uh, having a nice fat run up. And long story short, if you can't get up though, squirrel over to the left or right, and if there's enough room, you can grip on like the snow at the side. Even with that like little snow bank, it's kind of all but going straight under the chassis, and there's no real issues. But you've not always got the option of like snow to the side, but there's always a way. There's a loaf, there's a way. Um, the loaf's got chained on, but yeah, the loaf just pulls them up there. <laughs> it's always good for something. Well, I mean, it's not that slow considering it's pulling a truck that is wheel spinning <laughs> and is not able to get itself up there. Jobs are good and life saves the day again. Uh, what have we got next? Like I said, a few extra bits of footage in here that I'm not normally doing in other videos. That's why the video is like 52 minutes rather than, I don't know, probably nearer 42, 45. Um, this is going out of the Erska garage, Erska river garage. That is basically at least super snow, if not boring on a bit of death snow thrown in for good measure. And it ploughs through there pretty decently, can't really, uh, no complaints there. But yeah, the reason I wanted to come down here as well is to this section, because these are definitely now like super meaty and super juicy rocks. Some of them, still got the usual four. And I've just drove through here in the last couple of days doing like the Cosmodrome um, missions to unlock that and all sorts. So, and my Dolphin and the Tatrin were both... The dolphin was better through here. The Tatrin was suffering through there quite a lot. This thing just pretty much walked over them all with no major issues, so it was pretty good. And then this was that little bit of ice where I had to cut over. There's my Antarctic. I turned a bit early here. I should have stayed 
along the river's edge. But point being, this ice is a death sentence for most things, not for the Antarctic, to be fair. One of the few. But this thing is just about, it's still got enough ground clearance to where, like I said, the nose isn't catching. So its tyres can do what they, uh, they need to do. And it's certainly not quick, but it's better than being stuck and having to bring another vehicle along and pull yourself out. It's nice when you've got a vehicle that's actually, yeah, able to handle the terrain that's going to be thrown at it. And there we go. So pretty, uh, pretty good. Another tick in the box. This is that little bit where I was reversing out the garage and this was that death mud that took me like three and a half minutes just to get around this corner. I was just curious for myself, so I brought this back. And again, I mean, it goes pretty slow. It's one of the slowest sections I've seen this move, but clearly uh, that's a vast improvement on three and a half minutes. So long story short, it's actually made certain death mud sections, like, kind of viable. Which is good. And I'm kind of glad I just haven't really done hardly any missions on Erska River and went and got this thing first, because now I'll be doing, like, a live stream tomorrow. I'll probably do this, doing a load of missions on Erska or Cosmodrome, one of them. Maybe both. Jumped off the cliff and look at the loaf go. You see, land, you probably think, ah, oh, that loaf is screwed. But he's a goddamn magician. Look at him go. I mean, even I was like, god dang. Loaf's pulling out all the stops. He rolled back to his wheels just to give that rope a little tug that made my uh, truck settle back down on its wheels. I mean... Is that a goddamn professional or what? So we actually made it down on that one. Didn't have to uh, test if the loaf can flip it. Jump down again. I don't really know why. <laughs> but I did. I know that. Oh yeah, in fact I do know why. Because uh, I forgot to save the footage and I missed out the bit where I was doing like the drowning test bit. So I just had to quit this, load the game back up, get that bit of footage. That's why I just jumped off there again. But as you can see, it happened to land on its wheels again. It's pretty decent, I have to say, to be landing on its wheels. It's probably got the the most chance of landing on its wheels out of most things. Um, as far as drowning test, you can get about here. The snorkel, there you go, are at the back on, on the roof. But like I said, it's not as tall as like the P-16 or the Colobs. Maybe not even as tall as um, the Dolphin. It's going to be close, I would have thought. I was about to just go then and go and actually just drive it in the river, but I remember this. I started reversing out because there was something I just wanted to try quickly. And I've run out of editing slots, so I can't edit this little 10 seconds out just to skip to here, but otherwise I'd have to render the entire video. That'll take about an hour just so I can edit one more little piece out of it. It's a bit stupid. I can have 50 separate clips, if that makes sense. So once I've got to 50, if I try and split a clip again, it'll make 51 and it'll just say, nope, limit reach. It's like, really? This is 2021. Mm. It can only handle 50 slots. Um, yeah, I wanted to climb up here because I've sent quite a few vehicles up here. But I was curious because will the chained or lack of make any difference? Sort of right to that. It's this bit I thought it'd struggle. This rock. It was close, but I think those back wheels on the snow kind of got me high enough to where, well, it got up there, so yeah. Credit where it's due, it did it. <laughs> a trailer floating in the air. Pretty proud of that one, if I do say so myself. <laughs> that was not an easy trailer to fly, but she flew. Just needed a little bit more encouragement than most, but I believed in it. Um, yeah, driving down here does pretty well again, stayed very planted onto its wheels dug its nose in when we got down there, but it didn't just go mental and try and flip, so all good. It's a bit of a survivor, got to say. I have been squeezing in a bit of loaf training for it, because that's what it needed. And it's uh, paid off. Yeah, this was just pure drowning test flying in there. I mean, it doesn't get as far in as, like I said, the P-16 and stuff, because it just stalls quicker, but there's still plenty deep enough before it's going to stall, so that's not really an issue. Obviously, if I had a loaf sat on the roof right, this is just a bit of messing. Toe in the loaf, but he's backwards. <laughs> That's how you rotate your loaf. Skills. He's trained in such a situation. Uh, oh, going for another jump. I've left the loaf at the top, though. You'll see why. I wanted to go and do... Uh, to see if I could flip it. Because I was curious. I wasn't going to do it, and then I was like, do you know what? I went out to go back and get that other bit of footage. I did this, because I was like, if I don't... 
somebody might dare to think that my loaf could not flip this truck. So, we got it on its side, sending the loaf, no surprise to anyone, the loaf lands like a boss. And he's on his wheels and he's ready to go. But when hasn't he? <laughs> So, and I was honestly, this, this is genuinely the first time I've ever needed to rescue it, and I was kind of purposely trying to get it rolled. Um, so I didn't know, I was like, it might... Who knows? This could be the one. This could be the one that breaks the loaf's 100% rescue record. You can probably tell from the tone of my voice, I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> and since I already know the results, that should give you some kind of clue. Well, put it this way, it took longer to find the bloody winch point. And yeah, I was like, oh, well that was embarrassingly easy. <laughs> Goddamn horse strikes again. The camera keeps doing that because of that flying trailer. I blame the trailer personally. My camera was there first. Um, yeah, so, I went to tip it again because then what I thought is, like, what if it was on its roof? Could I tip it? Yeah, when it's on its roof, considering how stupidly easy it was to just tip then. And as you can see, I mean, the loaf's definitely a beast. The loaf ain't moving <laughs> and it's dragging... A sideways truck on its side towards me through quite a lot of uh, terrain. So the, the loaf's pulling power definitely isn't in question, but I can't get this bloody thing to tip at the minute. It's just going to keep dragging nearer to me on its side. So I drove, uh, yeah, just get a little bit more distance. Again with the bloody winch points, but we get it. I was just having another go, like, can I actually flip this thing on its roof? Oh, there's something else flying in the air. Probably my uh, airmail business. Well, all my aviation fuel, I'm not sure. Got quite a lot of stuff up there, to be honest. That's what she said. Um, yeah, well, as you can see, it's definitely not liking it. I don't know if the roof rack makes any difference. I left the roof rack on to, I assumed it'd make it possibly more difficult, but it's hard enough just to get it onto its roof. And then there you go. Horse, 100% record, still intact without any issues. So this is climbing up that, uh, uh, what are we on now? White Valley? Yeah, the White Valley Mountain. As far as like power-wise and all the rest of it, it's got no issues going this far, although it did seem to, like, it probably dropped from fifth to first. We'll get a free pass on that one, that's kind of the game mechanics more than the lack of truck ability. However, yet again, the lack of chained is going to hurt it a little bit. So when you get to this point, particularly when you run out of snow, and this isn't like black ice rock, but it's still rock that's not exactly that grippy. It just runs out and that's it, I can't get the rest away. I edited a bit there, but I scooted over eventually. I probably edited, edited a good minute out there. So it wasn't as smooth as, like I said, if it had chained, I do believe it would have actually just drove like the first route I took. I was trying to get like a little bit of a, um, to show you like this, the centre point, like the weight distribution, it's not directly in between the front and rear wheels, it's a little bit more to the front, which are to be expected with the, the whole cab and everything there, but it's not far off. If you draw a line like one quarter of the way into the second axle, it's sort of about there is like the, uh, yeah, the centre of gravity, the balancing point. So, went to go and murder this tree. Oh, he took a, he, uh, normally, those trees. Oh, that one tried fighting back, but it's too late. We're already winning. Um, yeah. Long story short, it's pretty good at murdering these trees as well, which is very nice. Because these trees ain't easy. They're like the big leagues, them ones, and, uh, yeah. Well, we already killed four of them, I think. Go for the last one. Bam. All right, no. <laughs> that is an immovable lamppost. Or telegraph pole, whatever. Um, if you remember, when I was exploring the Erska River map, my Tatarin got stuck uh, about here. Well, there that tree. I remember winching to that tree that was pretty near me. So this is now definitely Death Mud. You can kind of see from how it's all but stopped me. It definitely is the real deal, Death Mud. And even though it's close to have stopped me, it is actually still going forward. I would consider that a not really acceptable long term if there's like a massive field of Death Mud. But the fact that I know I've only got to kind of make it near to that shed, I could handle this speed. And of course, I've got a loaf on the roof. It fits a loaf on the roof just perfectly. And I would definitely recommend doing so. 
for multiple reasons. I'm sure I've got a bit of footage of it, so I'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, well, it got through that death mud. It made it back up to here. I didn't have to send anything in, in for a rescue. This was trying to get over that rock where you go to get the thing in the first place. See, this is loaf training. This is what I'm up to when I'm not making videos. We're teaching trucks how to survive. The loaf was mentoring him, and we made it in reverse, but I'm wrong with that. Um, yeah, like I said, stick a loaf on the roof, because with the roof rack, it's got 600 repairs and 200 fuel. Now with a loaf, it's got 900 repairs and 400 fuel and four spare tyres. And if you remember, you can put that thing on the back that has 40 fuel and two spare tyres, but it gets in the way, it hogs space, it gets in the way if you've got a trailer on, like a saddle trailer. If you put two loafs on like this, I've now got, what is it, 1,200 repair points, 600 litres of fuel, and eight spare tyres. So that shits all over the little extra add-on I can put on the back. And uh, yeah, you're like a one-man rescue team with that little setup on the go. You can have one loaf with an advanced, one with an auto, and this thing with an advanced. You're, uh, yeah, pretty unstoppable. And you can rescue and repair and all sorts. Um, yeah, long story short, I mean, get the vehicle. Well worth it. One of the best vehicles, if not, yeah, just the best vehicle in the game, really, objectively speaking. It's uh, definitely well up on my list already. I still, I don't think it's outright like I prefer it over the Dolphin. There is things the Dolphin I prefer, like the high range gearbox for speed and the chained, but it's definitely well up there. Like, it's now one of my favourite vehicles. Um, cost wise, was it about 220 odd grand or 240 grand fully upgraded? So, not cheap. Even stock, it's 191 grand, I think, and that's about as dear as the Derry is when it's fully upgraded. But it's worth the money. Long story short, it's like it justifies its own cost. There's a little description there, reading through it, just says it was made back in the day for like the army and heavy construction, and it can handle just about every terrain there is. And yeah, to be fair, it's not not far from the truth in this case. It's a pretty solid truck all around. So uh, yeah, I mean that's that's the end of the review basically. I've uh, I've sent it. Over just about everything, off everything, through everything, up everything, down everything, and it's done pretty bloody well. I uh, I really do like it. I'll be using it a hell of a lot more, most likely for the live stream tomorrow. So uh, yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Get yourself the Zix. Get yourself a loaf, because why wouldn't you? And I'll be back soon.